Hello again, Stan Craig. Welcome to our Net Law webinar. You know, one of the things that we've discussed is how to kill your business. In fact, why would you talk about this? Nobody wants to kill their business. The problem is, is that even unconsciously, sometimes consciously, but not on purpose, we wind up killing our business. I've sat for 27 years where you sit. As you know, I've been a financial advisor. I did that for some time. Then I managed financial advisors. I hired financial advisors. I trained financial advisors. Then I created products and helped financial advisors sell products. And for 27 years, I, I've been involved in this business. And one of the saddest things is to hire someone or to know someone who can do tremendous things in financial services, but who make the mistakes that unfortunately end their career, end their career. And frankly, this is the finest career out there. I've said this to you many times because it's a helping career. To me, that's really important. You're helping others. Plus, you get paid for it, which is even more remarkable. You think of all the helping careers where people are not near as well compensated as we are. Great compensation. And a product that everyone needs, you know, and you, you don't see people in distress like a physician or a policeman. You see people who you can help who are looking for help. It, it's a great business. So don't kill it. Don't kill it. That's what we're going to talk about today is three proven ways to kill your business. This is our second part. Today, a little more detail than last week. But remember, last week, what we talked about was unfortunately how to kill your business by um, being boring. Golly, being boring. It will kill you. It will kill you. Our financial products that we offer are sometimes complicated, oftentimes have more details in them that clients really want to know. Sometimes we get lost in what we're doing and we are boring. You cannot be boring as a salesman. If your clients start going to sleep, as we saw last week, if they hold up signs, which I wish they would, it'd help us get straightened out. We can't be boring. We have an exciting product that meets great client needs. And that's the whole question. If you're not excited about what you're offering, how can you expect somebody else to care? One of the things that happened to me early in my career is I was talking to a client about something I thought was terrific. I remember exactly what it was. And he said to me, you really believe in this, don't you? And I said, I do. That's the reason I'm chatting with you about it. He said, well, your enthusiasm and belief is enough for me. I'm not really sure I understand it, but I do understand enthusiasm and belief. And so let's do it. You can't be boring. You've got to have enthusiasm about what you do or no one else will care. We talked about that last week. If you need to review it, please do, because we talk about how to not be boring. But today we're talking about something else that can kill your business, um, and that's missing details. When you miss details, or when clients miss details, or when you misunderstand details, man, missing details matters big time. Uh, let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about. Suppose that your prospect said, you know, on-time delivery service, that's what I need. A big truck, I need personal service, I need somebody involved. We just relocated, as you know, from Kentucky to Florida, and we were very excited to find a person who met our needs, a company who met our needs. On-time delivery service, sounds great, doesn't it? Big truck and personal service. What if they said, not only that, we are environmental, environmentally positive. We have limited pollution. We do what you would like to do just as a good citizen, and we are a low-cost service. My gosh, all that sounds great, doesn't it? Well, let's, let's think about this for a minute. We say we use recycled and multi-use products. Oh, my gosh. On-time service, big truck, personal, environmentally sensitive, low-cost, recycling and multi-use products. Man, that's what I want. However, you can say all those things and still miss it. Look at this. <laughs> Every time I see this thing, it just tickles me to death. Here are these guys sitting in a cab of a truck with a delivery service powered by a bull. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot more than the bull pulling there going on, right? Yeah, all those things are important. 
everything they said is true, but some details are missing here, right? In your career, you cannot afford to miss some of those key details. And those key details I'm gonna to organize today into three areas. The second proven way to kill your business is to miss the details, miss the details. We love people who are detail oriented, but detail oriented doesn't mean that they're detail descriptive, right? What does this mean? The proven way to kill your business by missing details. Well, I'm going to talk about it in your offer. When you're making an offer to your client, when you're offering a product that you know, you believe in, you're enthusiastic about, you don't want to miss the details. You want to be sure in your offer, you cover exactly what needs to be covered. When you're with your client, you want to be sure you don't miss any details with the client. You can know the product really well, miss the details for your client, sabotage your business. Same as a professional. We are in a profession. One, we're in the selling profession. We're in sales, professional sales. And two, we are financial professionals. That is, we are set apart by the knowledge that we have. And the wonderful thing about this business, the reason I still enjoy it is I am learning things every day. I'm reading online, I'm reading Barron's, I'm reading the Wall Street Journal every day, I'm looking at publications I subscribe to, because to me it's exciting to learn more about this and it helps me communicate better. But if you miss any details in your offer, if you miss details with your clients, if you miss the details of who you are as a professional, you can kill your business. Even the right hire, the right person, with the right gifts and the right ability, can end up sabotaging themselves. And that's what I saw happen to so many folks. I don't want it to happen to you because you're here. You've already made the commitment. You know what this is about. And you have a chance to do marvelous things for your family. So let's chat about that. First, let's talk about in your offer. When you're offering a product, and it doesn't make any difference whether it is net law, a life insurance product, with a guaranteed rate of return, a universal life policy, whether it is a, an annuity product, whatever the multiple tools we have to meet client needs, you can end your business if you're not careful about your offer. What does that mean? That means not being transparent. One of the things I had to remind people over and over and over again is people wanna know what they're paying. And if you can't explain it, then there's a problem. For me, Sales charges are important to describe. Even if they're sales charges that the client never sees, you just need to say, I used to tell people, I'm compensated by the, the manufacturer, I'm compensated by this firm, and there's no direct charge to you, no, no commission charge that's paid by you. The charges are built in, and they generally average, and just explain it, just be transparent. Everybody in today's world wants to know what am I paying for this and what am I getting for what I pay? Being transparent is really important. They ought to know the company that's behind it. They ought to know who you are. They ought to know what you stand for. They ought to know your values. You don't want to get lost in those details, but it's important that you're, that you're transparent about what you're doing and what you're offering. The offer, it's critical that you be transparent, but don't bring up unnecessary details. You can get lost in unnecessary details about reinvestment rate and fees on reinvestment and the insurance that's built in, the life insurance is built in to the policy and the, the loan uh, provisions and what the loan provision does and what the current interest rate is. And gosh, you can get so lost. The important thing is, let me tell you how this is going to make sense for you. This is a guaranteed retirement plan. You've heard me say that about annuities over and over and over again. Do you have a guaranteed retirement plan? I have social security. Oh, sorry, not a guaranteed retirement plan. I have my pension plan. Do you know how many public and private pension plans around the country are underwater? Ah, it's tragic. That's the reason we are responsible for ourselves. And that's why a guaranteed retirement plan and annuity, even if it's a small check every month, that's important. Those checks mount up. And you can do it now because you have a lot of time for it to accumulate. It really benefits for you. Give them the big picture. Don't get just lost in details. The other thing we can do is leave out significant omissions. For example, any sales charges. For example, uh, this is illiquid. You can't 
get out of it without waiting five or 10 years. You don't want to surprise your client with that. You want to tell them that part of the reason this works so well is it's designed for you to keep the savings growing. Make a positive about the negatives. Don't leave out significant omissions. Explain everything that the client needs to know, but put it in a positive term. You can do that, and your mentors, your trainers can help you. So can the people whose products you're offering. We can do that with net law. That's right. We have a team to help you. Don't leave out anything significant. And then you have to be sure that it's relevant to the client. You have to be sure it's relevant to the client and relevant to what's happening in their lives and in their business. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit, but you've got to be sure that you demonstrate the relevance of what you're talking about. You cannot be talking about a life insurance policy with someone who's in their 80s, probably not a smart thing. You know that long-term care insurance probably isn't appropriate for somebody to use that in their later retirement years. You have to be relevant. So if you are a universal life specialist, if you are a guaranteed annuity specialist, if you are an annuity tied to market returns specialist, that may be appropriate for most people, but not everyone. So find the relevance. Otherwise, you wind up talking about something that's irrelevant. Let me give you an example. A friend of mine was chatting the other day. He was making a presentation. He had his presentation done. He had it on his computer and a brief a PowerPoint presentation. And when he sat down, he said, so, uh, so let me tell you what's the most important things that I could cover for you today. And the client said, Security, his eyes went up, security, yes, and, and the kind of customer service provided. He said to me, I had no idea what they were talking about because I hadn't thought about any security within the account, and I didn't know what kind of customer service we were going to offer. You know, you do that by asking questions. You don't want to talk about something that's not relevant, and you are wasting your time and your clients. And then no closing. The saddest thing I saw in working with advisors is they know the product, they're really good at what they do, they're great at relevance, they don't leave out anything, but they just end and say, well, uh, that's about it. Or, well, uh, should we talk about this again? Or, um, so uh, what do you think? You know, those are not closing statements. If you don't close, and you wait for the client to close themselves, you can be in real difficulty. In fact, sometimes we talk ourselves out of sales because when the client is ready to close and wants us to close, we go on and on and on and on and talk ourselves out of a sale. You gotta understand and be sensitive on how to close and when to close. Not closing means not selling. Not selling means no commissions. No commissions means you just sabotage your business. And here's the big tragedy. You can do all those things that I mentioned at first, transparent, the necessary details, not leaving anything out, being really relevant in what you offer, have a powerful close, but not follow up. What do you mean not follow up? Even if I've made the sale, do I need to follow up? Absolutely. You call back and thank them for the sale. Most salesmen are terrified. Oh no, if I talk to them again, they won't want it. Oh no, they got home and thought about it. Oh no, they talked to their neighbor and they talked to their CPA and they talked to their attorney. Listen, if they did, then you want to know, right? You have to follow up. So after every close, after every sale, after every meeting, you have to write, how do I follow up? And there's the follow up contact that's really important when you reaffirm and, and encourage them and tell them what a smart thing they did. And then when the contract's engaged, you want to call them up and say, now it's enforced, this is what it means. And then you want to follow up again with a confirmation. I, I'm really pleased. And when the confirmation call comes, that's when you ask for a referral. People die in their business because they never follow up. I used to pass out leads to my guys. I'd walk back and sit on their desk and say, do you have your leads? They'd pull them out of the desk and show them to me. How long did you, how many have you followed up on? Well, I really haven't. What a waste. What a waste. In your product offers, you can kill your business. With your clients, you can kill your business. How does that work? Suppose you got all those offer things down really well. 
But here's mistakes that in your business with a client. And the number one is this, miss an appointment. You know, we all are going to miss appointments if we get scheduled too heavy. We'll all miss appointments because something comes up in our day, in our business, in our lives, with our family. But there's no excuse for not letting someone know that you can't keep the appointment and rescheduling and offering to reschedule. Albert Einstein <laughs> said something really simple. He said, 90% of success is just showing up on time. And that's right. That is so true. Just never miss an appointment. Change it if you have to, but don't waste a client's time and don't waste your time by missing an appointment. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? What about no knowledge of the client's need? I just told you about my friend who made a presentation. He finally got around to asking the question, what is it that you're really important to you? And they said security and customer service, and he had nothing prepared to talk about security and customer service. You know, you need to know what the client's need is. And simply because he's 65 or because he's 45 doesn't mean he had the same need. You know, you just cannot walk out and blindly shoot. Some people take a shotgun approach and blast everything that's flying by, hoping that something will hit. Successful sales is a rifle approach, knowing what the client needs and marketing specific to that need. How do you do that? You can't do it while you're doing all the talking. Let me just say again, in some of the folks I'm coaching, I have a, a really smart, wonderful person who cannot shut up. Both times I've been with this person and they've done presentations. The client has said, when they're back for the closing, the client said, let's not go over, through, over all that again. Can we do it and shorten the presentation? These are major financial opportunities, but the person cannot stop talking. It just does it all. Let me tell you one of the rules in sales is the person who does all the talking loses. Why is that? Because as you've heard me say before, if I do all the talking, I only know what I know. If I shut up and listen, then I can learn what you know, and that makes me powerful. You have to be prepared, but you have to be prepared by not doing the talking. Here's the problem when we're talking, we're not asking questions. You've got, how do you know what the client need is? You ask questions. How do you know where, where they need help and assistance? How do you know what you can do to be of greatest service to them? You have to ask the question, and that's a good question. What can I do to be of greatest service to you? And they say, well, I'm not surely what you do. Then you do your elevator speech. Remember your one to two minute elevator speech. I help people solve one of the biggest problems that they have. And that is how to make their life really significant for the family through an estate plan and how to make sure their health care is taken care of with advanced care planning. That's what I do. And I do it really well. And it really changes people's lives and takes away a lot of the insecurity sometimes families feel. That's what I do. You have to ask questions. And then once you've said that, then you say, so let me ask you today, do you have a will, last will and testament? Do you know where it is? When was the last time you updated it? That's what I'd say for a net law. Or I would say, let me ask you a question. Has anybody in your family ever gone to the hospital? Have you ever been with someone? Sure. Well, you know, they always ask two questions or three. Do you have a durable power of attorney for health care? Do you have a living will? Do you have a HIPAA authority? You want to be able to say yes to all those things because that is your way of being protected from the best medical programs in the world. You need to ask questions, ask the client questions. What's most relevant? How are you involved in this? You gotta be sure you do that, do it well. And here's the problem too. Once you ask a question, you can follow up with more questions or you can get back to talking all over again. I was in a sales presentation this week with a, again, a client I'm working with, just coming along. I watched and was dismayed just dismayed that when the client actually said, well, here's what we're interested in. He went right on and started talking about what he was interested in. He spoke about all their capabilities instead of saying, tell me more about that. When a client says 
this is what I'm in interested in and say, tell me more about that. What, what made you, what made that a need for you? What made you aware of that in your family? You got to listen, folks. You can destroy your business if you are simply one who talks all the time. And then here's something else that hurts is lacking product knowledge. Now we've said before, you don't have to be an expert. No one expects you to be an expert in everything. No one expects you to be perfect and know everything there is to know, but they do expect you to understand just what you're talking about. Do you have to know everything about net law? Probably not. I don't think so. There's a lot of details. What you do have to know is how it meets a client need. What does it do? What does estate planning do for you? Why is a living trust important? You don't want to talk about how it's set up and how you put in the names and that's detail. When you're selling, you want to talk about, let me just tell you why this is so important. And then my friends, you want to say, let me tell you what it's done for me and my family. Let me tell you why we did this. You cannot lead where you're not willing to go. That's not saying you need to buy every product you own, but the truth is estate planning, Medical documents are appropriate for every person who's breathing, who's 18 and over. So this is a universal product. That's why I love what net law is because you can chat with anybody about it. You can learn it really quickly. It's not a regulated product and it starts a chain of referrals and business growth that can be amazing to you. As a professional, you can sabotage yourself by not, really understanding your offer. You can sabotage yourself by not really understanding your client, by missing details. And as a professional, wow, we can sabotage ourselves so many times. I've seen people with great product knowledge, the ability to talk to clients, but who blow themselves out of water by the things we're gonna talk about now. Here's how to kill your business if you pay no attention to the ABCs I'm gonna share with you. You know, the smartest thing that you have to deal with is your attitude because that's the only thing you can control, right? You can't control your client's attitude. You can't control the weather. You can't control whether the dog's going to bite or not, but your attitude you can control. And I learned a long time ago that a positive attitude always works, always works. Being positive in your attitudes changes everything because if you're not, with a positive attitude base, if you walk out believing this is not going to work, I'm not being positive about it, I don't like the product, or not positive about your client. Listen, I served with a person who I was trying to help, and this person said to me, I don't like my blank. Oh my gosh, he didn't like the very people who were paying his salary. I don't like these people. Good Lord, that's a tragedy. Can you imagine walking into corporations? I'm going to do a great corporation presentation today, but I don't like anybody in this room. Let me just tell you, it isn't going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work because your attitude shows. How? You're not smiling for one. You're not warm in your conversation for one. Attitude makes the difference, and you're in charge of your attitude. You've got to have a positive attitude. Without a positive attitude, we don't even want to get out of bed in the morning, right? It's just no, no, no. The second thing is belief. We're talking about the ABCs, the belief that you have to have. And you know what? You've got to believe that you're doing the right thing. I could not get up in the morning if I thought, okay, I'm going to go to work today and shaft everybody I talk to. I'm going to mess up everybody's life and I'm going to confuse the world. Gosh, wouldn't that be terrible? We have to believe, number one, that what we're doing is the right thing. And number two, we are the right person to be doing it. I've always thought I was the right person to be doing it. Do you know why I'm doing these calls? Do you know why I'm doing these webinars? I think I'm the right person to be doing it. I think I have a positive attitude. I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in net law. I believe in what you are doing. Because financial services is so critical. You have to have a belief in what you're doing. If you don't, you need to go somewhere where you do believe in what you're doing. Without belief, it's tough to have a positive attitude. And without a positive attitude, you can't make it in this business because the world around us is very negative about, you know, they'll make jokes about financial advisors, make jokes about insurance salesmen, they make jokes about us all. So we've got to stay positive in a negative world. That's really important. And here's the C, commitment. 
You can have a great attitude. You can believe in what you're doing. But if you're not committed to making it work, what difference does a positive attitude work? I really believe in this. I really do. I'm, I believe I can do it. I, I believe it's a great product. Uh, but I'm not making any calls. Uh, I'm not mentioning to anybody I see. I'm not telling people what I do. I, I, I'm, I believe in it. I do. But I haven't made a commitment to make it work every day. My mentors, you've heard me say, said, Stan, you got to bake the cake every day. You have to make the cake work every day. You have to be committed to what you're doing. That means learning about the products. That means learning to interact with clients. That means being a professional. Commitment is so important. That's what makes the other two work. And how does commitment work? The D is discipline. Gloria and I have, <laughs> we, we have six children. I've told you before that we had a quiet, inexpensive hobby that got totally out of hand, and now we have six children. Oh my goodness. And you know what's the hardest thing to teach our children? Yeah, discipline. The discipline to close the phone or the TV or the book and think, study, write, do the things that's gonna make a difference in school. The discipline to practice. It was interesting seeing Tiger Woods come back in the British Open, wasn't it? Do you know when I first saw Tiger Woods? It's when he was playing at Stanford University on the golf team. And the interviewer from Sports Illustrated talked about this young man's potential. And they were standing on a cliff overlooking the Pacific in a driving rainstorm. And Tiger was driving balls into the rain and watching where they came down. He worked through every distance club in his bag standing in the driving rain. And the guy said, I've never seen anybody as disciplined as Tiger Woods. That's the reason he's able to come back. I'm, I'm pleased that he's able to control himself because as you've heard me say before, he lost his concentration. And when you lose your concentration, your attitude dies, your belief dies, your commitment dies, and it kills you. But you got to get the discipline back and start working again. We've all got to have the discipline to make the calls, the discipline to follow up. The discipline to understand the products. Discipline is a key. It's the difference between success and failure. Discipline means I pick myself up. I get on the phone. I do it again and again. I stay with the program. I understand it. And I know what's going to happen at the end. I'm going to be a winner because it's up to me. Here's the next thing is enthusiasm. Uh, sometimes I know I'm probably a little too enthusiastic about the way I sound. Sometimes I'm probably too enthusiastic in the way I chat with clients, but I'm telling you, I love what I do. I'm a happily married husband. Gosh, I, I enjoy my wife so much in every way. She is one of the most important people I've ever met. One of the most precious people I ever met. And if you're around me and Gloria, you'll understand that uh, we express it. We express it all the time. I'm enthusiastic about my precious wife. Been married 40 years next year. Second marriage for us, but gosh, what a, what a wonderful person. I'm enthusiastic about marriage. That's the reason I'm pretty good talking to couples about you know, marriage. I'm enthusiastic about financial services, but it's not about me, folks. I want you to have that same enthusiasm. How do you get that same enthusiasm? How do you get it and keep it? Well, you start doing the things that we've been talking about, working your attitude, your belief, your commitment, your discipline, and then you'll begin to get more and more enthused. And here's what you have to add is faith. You know, I've heard people say, what goes around comes around. Have you ever heard that? Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Whatever seeds you plant are going to produce a crop. All those things are true. You've heard me say before, I'm going to mention it again. You sow an act and you reap a habit. You sow a habit and you reap your character. You sow your character and you reap your destiny. And it all starts with a thought. You sow a thought, you reap an action. You sow an action, then you start reaping the results of that action. And before long, you are what you've made yourself. Faith means I know that I'm going to make this work. I believe that I'm doing the right things and eventually it's going to pay off. 
So I'm going to keep plowing ahead because I know I'm doing the right things. I know I'm sowing the right seed. I believe this is going to work out because friends, you will get discouraged in all those things. You're going to get discouraged, but faith means I'm going to work my way through this discouragement. Faith means good things are going to come to those who wait. Faith means I believe in what I'm doing because I believe in me. I believe in, in the, the world is a good place. I believe there's a good purpose in what we're doing and I'm going to take care of it. And here's the last one. If all those things are true, then you know the other attitude you have to have an attitude of gratitude. You know, I'm really thankful I'm doing these webinars. Are they a little work? Are they more than a little work? Are they a lot of work? Yeah. Not just in the composing, but in putting them together and the thoughts, the writing, and, and then trying to make these things work for you all the time. But I'm glad I'm able to do it because I, I hope one or two of you, maybe three or four are being helped. And occasionally you will send me an email and you'll say, Stan, that's helped. And I appreciate it so much. It's important because I'm thankful for what I'm able to do. I'm thankful for the skills I have. I'm thankful that you are out there. Gosh, gratitude is so important. Nothing comes to me because I deserve it. If Dave Ramsey says it all the time, I'm thankful I don't get what I deserve. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm thankful I don't get what I deserve. I'm thankful that I get all these benefits and all these blessings. And, and that attitude of gratitude keeps you humble, keeps you working, keeps you hungry. As a professional, you want to keep your attitude up. You want to keep your beliefs in you and your product. You want to keep your commitments. You want to have discipline and keep working what's going to work. You want to have enthusiasm for what you're doing and transfer that to your client. You want to have faith that this is going to work and your gratitude makes it all work. Why does net law work? Well, real quickly, let me tell you, because everyone's a prospect. I love this. When I was an FA, a financial advisor, an AE, an account executive, you know, all those things, wealth manager, all those things, not everyone was a prospect for everything I had except for one thing we had, which was called a cash management account, a CMA, which Merrill Lynch invented. It was a checking account that paid interest and had a credit card attached to it. It was wonderful. Everyone was a prospect. Gosh, that's what you know, brought me into a lot of success because I had a product everyone can sell. I could sell to everyone. It didn't have a big payday, but the results were huge because people transferred assets into that account. Listen, with net law, everyone's a prospect, even if they have a will. In fact, I spoke to someone yesterday. Here's what you say. If you speak to a client and said, by the way, let me just ask you a question. Do you, do you have a, a last will and testament and all your medical documents already completed? And if they say yes, are they still a prospect? Sure they are, because the next question is, when was the last time you updated them? And if you needed them, do you know where you could put your hands on them quickly? No one generally has updated anything, and no one knows where they are if they needed them. That's why, for the price of a net law account, they can just transfer in their current documents if they want to. They can put their current documents in the vault. The vault makes everything accessible. So would you pay for just the vault? Well, of course you would. Of course you would. In fact, I, you've heard me talk about the vault before. Um, if you would like, here's what I'd like you to do. You email Mark or Vanessa, you know how to do that, and say, I want Stan's list of the advantages of the vault and the net law plan. I'm going to show you all the features and the benefits that come from having the net law plan, especially the vault, because the vault can store everything. It's really great. And everyone's a prospect. Everyone can afford this. It, it's everybody needs it. It's a great way to talk about net law. The other thing is no one's offering this solution. <laughs> you are it. How many guys are trying to sell a mutual fund or how many guys are out there trying to market products that, that you're marketing? No one's trying to sell this. They're not. Why? Because they can't. You have such an opportunity here. You are one of the few financial groups in the world that can offer this product. No one's talking to your client about this. 
attorneys aren't. Now they're advertising in the newspaper, we can do this for you, but they're not calling clients or talking to clients or speaking to people about what they do. And if they did, people wouldn't do it anyway because attorneys are scary, you know? We all know the jokes about attorneys. There's so many of them, we don't even want to repeat them, but they're generally not <laughs> as funny to an attorney because they're generally all true, you know? <laughs> Sorry about that. But you, are, you have this unique opportunity to show it to everyone. And here's the other thing. This is uncomplicated. You don't have to go in a great deal about this. Great detail isn't needed. You just want to tell them what it does. Here's the benefits that you receive from them and get them started. And we'll pick it up through Mark, Vanessa, Mary, Jennifer. We can help you get it done and accessible. Gosh, just look at your computer. Look at your smartphone. This is accessible today, which makes it really terrific. And for you, you have step six. So you can even play the video to show it to the client. The other thing is, and I was chatting again, <laughs> another agent spoke with me last week, talk about group presentations. I've told you before, I made my uh, success in group presentations. It always worked, it kept me always in front of prospects, and I always had a great story to tell. Net law is perfect for that, because it's simple and easy to understand and no one has heard about it. So it works out really well, and we can help you with that. You know, you can use any of the slides I've used before. You can put together things because we're not regulated. It's not a compliance issue. The other thing this directly benefits you, what I mean by that, open your own net law account. Don't just buy it. Don't wait for a BOGO. Don't sit around and think, well, I don't have the money. Buy it. Number one, you'll get a commission. Number two, you can tell the client, I have done this. Let me tell you what it means to me. Net law directly benefits you. you. You may not buy an annuity. You may not have some of the products you offer. This is a product that's gonna benefit you personally, not as a product to sell, but as a product to bring into your family for your husband, your wife, your spouse, your kids. You need to get this done. Here's something you can do for you and get paid a commission to do it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's why net law works. We have people who are benefiting, telling people who are benefiting about the same thing. No family left behind. Really important. And the other thing you get, gosh, log on to step six, net law, Inc. at step six. Goodness gracious. You'll find all these webinars recorded that you can play. You'll find all kinds of resources to download. You'll find videos and training and in addition to what you can see 24 seven, you've got Mark, Vanessa, Mary, you've got Jennifer, not to talk to you, but to talk to your clients. Wow, that's pretty cool, isn't it? That's why net law works. And there's just one more thing I wanna add, and that's this. Remember we said the difference is in the details, how to do your business is missing the details, misses big and the details you've got to remember with your product, with your client, with your profession. Here's the last detail that's so critical. 212 degrees. What is 212 degrees? If you just write 2112 on your desk and look at it, if you write 2112 across your brain, if you write it in your notes, write it in big numbers, 2112, here's why it's important. One extra degree can change everything. 212 is not the same as 211. Why is that important? Because at 211, 211 degrees, you have hot water. You ever watched a pot of water that you're boiling for pasta or you're boiling for tea? It gets to 211 degrees and starts moving, but it doesn't do anything. At 212, one degree, it becomes boiling water. The difference between 211 and 212 is one degree, but it changes everything. What happens with boiling water? Boiling water produces steam. The Industrial Revolution in America and around the world was changed because of steam. Steam, as you know, powers a locomotive. That's what boiling water. Boiling water. Remember the old westerns when the trains had to come in and they had to get the water out of the water tower? Steam powers a locomotive. Listen, it's just water. At 211 degrees, the train's going nowhere. At 212, it powers a locomotive. A plan and action are required. 
That means that you've got to stop staying at the 211 spot and step into the 212 spot. You got to start saying, hey, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to make net law a focus. I'm going to make this a focus. I'm, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to have a positive attitude about it. I'm going to believe I can make a difference. I'm going to make a commitment. Here are the contacts I'm going to make this week. Here's the sales I'm going to make this week. You know how that works. That's the difference between 211 and 212. Can you add just one extra degree to what you're doing this week? Can you add just one extra call? Can you add just one extra presentation? Of course you can, because as long as it's just hot water, it's not powerful. You want to turn your business into steam. And how do you do that? You turn up the heat, turn up the heat. If you want to go somewhere, if you want to take your career somewhere, don't sabotage yourself. Be sure that you make the 212 commitment that you go somewhere. Golly. Water to steam to powering your locomotive. If you want to go somewhere, just make the 212 commitment. It's your business. You know, it's your life. It's really important that you remember that you are responsible for your results. I, I'm here to help. Your mentors are here to help. The people around you are here to help. There's people everywhere who want to help. But it's also up to you. It's time to grow your business and stop the business killers. If any of those things I mentioned today have been a part of what you're doing, lay them aside. We're here to help. By doing what? Gosh, turn up the heat on your business. Turn up the heat on your business. Just turn up the heat. Go from a 211 to a 212 and watch what happens to your business. We're here to help you do that. And you know that. Mark, Vanessa, Mary, or Jennifer, we really want to help. St check out step six. Look at step six online. You'll be amazed at the things that are there for you. Next week, we're going to talk about the third way to kill your business. And that's something you do not want to do. But I think you want to come listen to this as well. I'm Stan Craig. Drop me a note. Let me know what you'd like to hear. Let me know I can be more helpful. If you have questions about net law, that's why we're here. We have a positive attitude. We believe in what we're doing. We're committed to helping you. Come talk to us. This is Stan Craig. Have a great time. Gary, Mark, thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us, and I'll chat with you next week. Bye-bye.